Well, folks, here we are in front of the uh, Thomas Crane Library in Quincy, Massachusetts, just right in Quincy Center. And we're here with Reverend Stevie Kraft. How are you doing, Rev? I'm blessed. How about yourself? And I'm doing well, thank you. God has given us this beautiful uh, spring beautiful day. day. And we're about to do an interview on the Don Cussler Show, the Constitution then and now. But I thought we'd go into the Quincy the Library here to discuss something that happened here, a very interesting event. Back about a year and a half ago, I made an offer to give this book that you're holding in your hand, Crimes of the Educators, to donate it to the library. And about two weeks later, I got a call, and they said that uh, they're not going to accept it. And I asked them, you know, why would they accept it? And I forgot the excuse, something to do with not peer-reviewed or whatever the case may be. Well, Sam Blumenfeld, it was co-authored by Sam Blumenfeld and Alex Newman, friends of both people that we know pretty well. Sam has since passed away. Sam's a dear friend of ours and also an instructor at Camp Constitution. Interesting about Sam is that he taught, he taught here at the, um, at the Quincy Schools, and one of his books, at least one, is in the library called How to Tutor. Not very controversial, I don't believe. Uh, although, of course, back in the 70s when it was first published, uh, the idea of people educating their own children was not too well accepted. Um, and I just took him to the library, and we saw some of the books that you saw on the shelves. What would you... Uh... I saw many, many various and diverse topics on the shelves that we looked at. And I was completely befuddled to try to make sense of why, since we saw that How to Tutor by Sam Blumenfeld is in the library, I could not understand what do they mean when they say that it has not been peer-reviewed. But just looking at the title, Crimes of the Educators, how utopians are using government schools to destroy America's children, that says it all right within itself. And as I'm looking on the back cover, Mr. Sherliff, I'm looking at, now think about this, this timely book thoroughly exposes the attempt by progressive utopians to destroy our constitutional republic and replace it with a socialist fantasy. And they have spent a hundred years gradually dumbing down the American people by departing from traditional phonics method of teaching, reading, and replacing it with a look-see sight method that has led to a dismal decline in literacy, literacy among Americans. The utopians have purposely crippled America's future in order to fundamentally transform the nation, its values, and its system of government. This says it all right here, and I believe because of the truth and the controversial the topic, topics, that's right. Right, that this book entitles that they decided that this book was a no-no. Uh, I saw books on witchcraft in the library. I saw books on feminism. I saw books on homosexuality. I saw books with every title on Edgar the Casey's books, Edgar, yes, the Quran, everything. And to their credit, they had some conservative titles in there as well. I, I, you know. I, I saw, I saw Bill O'Reilly uh, and Ann Coulter Bork, uh, and, and slashing toward uh, Gamora. Gamora. But I cannot understand for the life of me why they have such a problem with crimes of the educators, other than the fact that it's definitely not politically correct. And what's fascinating is that you would think people that are in the library business or community, or however they call themselves, they would think that they would encourage people to be good readers. And they were the first ones that probably, when they say that the, the people have been here 20 or 30 years, can see the decline of yes. reading skills. Yes. And they should embrace books like yes, this. Yes, exactly. But the, I use the educational mafia. They have a lot of power. Now, that book, it was banned. I, I use the word banned because the libraries have the sanctimonious banned book week or banned book month when certain books... Now, banning a book is a serious thing. Yes. Uh, but they they didn't ban it. We 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 can we published the book published by World Net Daily. People can read it. Other libraries do carry it. Braintree, which is the next town over, has no problems with this book. I think you can get this book in downtown Boston Library. So why here in Quincy is that the medical uh, the, that a mafia that educational mafia a little bit stronger here, or could it be that a librarian maybe ha has a, a relative who's a teacher and this doesn't sit well? So that it's very arbitrary. Be, yes, you know? That would be my my guess. Uh, I see no logical reason. There's no profanity in there. Right. It names names. It doesn't just talk about the establishment. It talks about people that are involved and it documents everything. It's not it's not ad hominem attacks. It goes into the history of 
government education from Horace from Mann, Horace Mann to John, John Dewey, Dewey, and it simply quotes what they've written. Yes. But there's a chapter in that particular book that should be a particular interest to people who are who are black. And uh, uh, the, chapter 21, eugenics and the creation of the black underclass. And no, I'm just going to read one paragraph out of this, Mr. Sherliff. One of the evil fruits of the tree of evolution is the idea of eugenics. That notion that human beings can be bred to perfection by the same methods used to breed perfect cattle. Since evolution itself reduces man to the level of animal, it is not surprising that eugenics was adopted by many in the educational elite as a means of so solving man's social problem. So this chapter talks about how a, a, a black underclass was created by the white elite and those same, the, the, the sons and daughters and granddaughters of that same elite don't like to discuss this no. because this is overt racism. Yes. This is yes. worse than the Klansmen with their crosses. Yes. This is the kind of racism that destroys a mind. Yes, and it's called, it's labeled scientific That's right. racism. That's which right. Supposedly gives it some type of credibility in the intellectual uh, elitist community. And doesn't he address, uh, the authors address the, uh, the IQ test, the beginning of the IQ tests? Uh, in I, that. Believe, I believe so. And the notion of the IQ test was by these uh, scientific racists is to prove that certain races of people are uh, intellectually inferior. And one of the tests they did was a response test, a reflex test. And they had a, they had black a group of blacks. And this was back in the uh, late 1800s. This was a long time ago. Uh, a group of um, Indian Americans and a group of white Americans. And they determined that the white Americans reacted to stimulus a little bit slower than the other two groups. Therefore, they concluded that the smarter you are, the slower you react to stimulus. Yes, on page 183, it says one of the earliest tests to determine racial differences was conducted by R. Mead Bach and published in, psycho in the Psychological Review in 1895. It was a reaction time test using three groups of males, 12 Caucasians, 12 American Indians, and 11 African Americans. They were tested for the speed with which they reacted to the sight of a pendulum, a particular sound and a slight electrical shock. The American Indians reacted fastest, the Caucasians slowest, and the blacks fell in the middle. On the basis of these flimsy results, Botch determined that the smarter and more intellectually developed the individual, the slower his reaction time to ordinary physical stimuli. And from this, he concluded, quote, unquote, pride of race obscures the view of the white man with reference to the relative automatic quickness of the Negro, that the Negro is, in the truest sense, a race inferior to that of the white, can be proven by many facts, and among these, by the quickness of his automatic movements as compared with those of the white, unquote. And it's, it's pure baloney. Of course it is. Somehow that if you're faster to respond to something, you're somehow stupid. I it's would ridiculous. say that probably is a sign of a little more intelligence. <laughs> well, uh, people can get the book. You can't get it in this library, but you can probably request it, and they would have to go through the motions. But you're better off buying a copy on Amazon. It's published by WorldNet Daily, Crimes of the Educators. And if you live in Quincy or you want to give a call to the Quincy Library and say, hey, look, there's room on the shelves for a book like this. Yes. Definitely. And uh, it's a, you can't hide this fact. This, this stuff is going to get out. It's slow. It's the, the information is getting out. Not as much as fast as we would like, but it's going to get out thanks to social media. So thank you for watching. You've been watching Camp Constitution. And please subscribe to us on YouTube. Thank you. God thank bless you.